I'm John. Today I will tell you about the demons of King Solomon. The demons names, given below, are taken from the Arsgo Ischia, which differs in terms of number and ranking from the Pseudomarchia demonym of Johann Weyer. As a result of multiple translations, there are multiple spellings for some of the names, which are given in the articles concerning them. Jin. In demonology, Jin is a strong great duke of hell, and rules over 40, 45 according to other authors, legions of demons. He tells all past, present and future things, shows the meaning of all questions that are asked to him reconciles friends, and gives honor and dignity. He is depicted as a baboon or according to some, in the form of a cynocephalus, dog-headed. Other spellings, Gozain, Gazoin, Gazoin. Citri. He appears during the say even though Seth is the Egyptian lord of darkness. He is one of the seven sons of Satan. He is dark completely, jet black hair. He had as first strawberry dark brown wings that turn into beautiful soft black feathery angel wings like a raven and he wears a long black satin robe. He was very kind, soft spoken, and left me with a strong energetic feeling of peace. He has the most beautiful energy. He definitely represents darkness. He appears to me at mid afternoon on a sunny day in my room. He may be both a day and night demon, God. He also appears with his wife, Nephthys, Bathin. <laughs> Malath. Horrible and powerful king. He rides on a white horse while all kind of the music surrounds him. He is furious if he is called first and must be held and handled in a triangle or a circle and with the stick of hazel, and he must be turned to the southeast. He must be welcomed as a king with respect but no matter what you must wear a silver ring on the middle finger of your left hand and always near your face. He makes love happen among men and women and he comes from the order of power. Power. Blair Age. In demonology, Blair Age is the mighty great Marquis of Hell who has 30 legions of demons under his power. He causes great battles and disputes and makes gangrene wounds caused by arrows. Some authors say this demon belongs to the zodiacal sign of Sagittarius. He is a powerful Marquis. He looks like Sagittarius, dressed in green with bow and arrows. He is the one who makes wars and killings. He is depicted as a gallant and handsome archer clad in green, carrying a bow and quiver. Other spellings Larigi, Larry, Larica, Larry, Lori, Ori. Alligar or Abigar. Fallen angel and the 15th of the 72 spirits of Solomon. Alligar is a duke who appears as a goodly knight carrying a lance, a serpent, and an ensign. He discovers hidden objects, kindles love and lust, and procures the favor of lords and knights. He marshals armies and causes war. He has 60 legions of demons under his command, his command. <laughs> Zephyr. Not much is known about the Duke Zephyr. He is primarily summoned by male followers to make women fall in love with them. The cost of this love is that the woman who falls in love in this way will not be able to conceive the man's children. To some this may not seem like a very big deal. But centuries ago men considered having children to carry on a their family name to be of great importance, especially to men in powerful positions or with long family legacies. He can also cause people to shape shift into other forms, usually at the request of this summoner, but not necessarily in the form that is requested. Zephyr always appears in Red Knight's armor, Knight's armor. <laughs> Bodus. In demonology, Baudus is a great president and Earl of Hell, commanding sixty legions of demons. He tells of all things past and future, and reconciles friends and false. He is depicted as an ugly viper, but when he changes shape, he puts himself in human shape, with big teeth and two horns. When in human shape he carries a sharp and bright sword in his hand. The Great President and Count he appears as a big snake, 
but he can also take the shape of a human but with horns and big teeth. He carries sharp sword in his hand he is the creator of past, present and future. He can bring peace between enemies. Baudin In demonology, Baudin is a duke, great duke according to Pseudomarchia Demonum, of hell, who has under his command thirty legions of demons. He knows the virtues of precious stones and herbs, and can bring men suddenly from one country to another. He helps one attain astral projection, and takes one wherever one wants to go. He is depicted as a strong man with the tail of a serpent, riding a pale horse. Powerful duke who appears as a strong, big man with the tail of a snake, riding a white horse. He is good with herbs and jewelry. He can take people from one place to another in a second. Other spellings, Bathom, Mathen, Marthen. Celios or Sois. Cells has bright orange hair with a silver aura. He changes the color of his hair to black and his aura to gold. He wears a suit of armor. He also disappears to where you can only see his head. He causes love between the sexes, stimulates sexual desire and incites the passions. He encourages fidelity to one's partner. The Great Duke. He appears as a brave solitaire riding a crocodile with crown of a duke on his head. He brings love. Person. In demonology, person is a great king of hell, being served and obeyed by 22 legions of demons. He knows of hidden things, can find treasures, and tells past, present, and future. Taking a human or aerial body he answers truly of all secret and divine things of earth and the creation of the world. He also brings good familiars. Person is depicted as a man with the face of a lion, carrying a ferocious viper in his hand, and riding a bear. Before him there can be heard many trumpets sounding. Other spellings, Cursen, Person. Legend of Throne Solomon at his throne, painting by Andreas Brugger, 1777. Solomon's throne is described at length in Targumshni, which is compiled from three different sources, and in two later Midrash. According to these, there were on the steps of the throne twelve golden lions, each facing a golden eagle. There were six steps to the throne, on which animals, all of gold, were arranged in the following order, on the first step a lion opposite an ox, on the second, a wolf opposite a sheep, on the third, a tiger opposite a camel, on the fourth, an eagle opposite a peacock, on the fifth, a cat opposite a cock, on the sixth, a sparrow hawk opposite a dove. On the top of the throne was a dove holding a sparrow hawk in its claws, symbolizing the dominion of Israel over the Gentiles. The first Midrash claims that six steps were constructed because Solomon foresaw that six kings would sit on the throne, namely, Solomon, Rehoboam, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Ammon, and Josiah. There was also on the top of the throne a golden candelabrum, on the seven branches of the one side of which were engraved the names of the seven patriarchs Adam, Noah, Shem, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Job, and on the seven of the other the names of Levi, Kahath, Amram, Moses, Aaron, Eldad, Medad, and, in addition, Ker, another version has Haggai. Above the candelabrum was a golden jar filled with olive oil and beneath it a golden basin which supplied the jar with oil and on which the names of Nadab, Abel, and Eli and his two sons were engraved. Over the throne, twenty-four vines were fixed to cast a shadow on the king's head. By a mechanical contrivance the throne followed Solomon wherever he wished to go. Supposedly, due to another mechanical trick, when the king reached the first step, the ox stretched forth its leg, on which Solomon leaned, a similar action taking place in the case of the animals on each of the six steps. From the sixth step the eagles raised the king and placed him in his seat, near which a golden serpent lay coiled. When the king was seated a large eagle placed the crown on his head, the serpent uncoiled itself, and the lions and eagles moved upward to form a shade over him. 
The dove then descended, took the scroll of the law from the ark, and placed it on Solomon's knees. When the king sat, surrounded by the Sanhedrin, to judge the people, the wheels began to turn, and the beasts and fowls began to utter their respective cries, which frightened those who had intended to bear false testimony. Moreover, while Solomon was ascending the throne, the lion scattered all kinds of fragrant spices. After Solomon's death, Pharaoh Shishak, when taking away the treasures of the temple, I Kings 14. 26, carried off the throne, which remained in Egypt until Sennacherib conquered that country. After Sennacherib's fall Hezekiah gained possession of it, but when Josiah was slain by Pharaoh Nicho, the latter took it away. However, according to rabbinical accounts, Nicho did not know how the mechanism worked and so accidentally struck himself with one of the lions causing him to become lame, Nebuchadnezzar into whose possession the throne subsequently came, shared a similar fate. The throne then passed to the Persians, whose king Darius was the first to sit successfully on Solomon's throne after his death. Subsequently the throne came into the possession of the Greeks and Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel.